Hello, welcome back to The Sim. In this one, we're hopping back in the fly-by-wire A32NX here in CYOW. And it's not a great day, as you can see, but we still need to get our private jet full of special passengers, uh, uh, government, all the way to Montreal, because it's so far to drive. But before we do that, we need to set up our Thrustmaster Throttle TQ so that it works. So let's go ahead, jump in and get started. Now to do this, we're setting everything up in SPAD.next like we always do. You'll notice I am running 0, 9, 12, 27. And this is the fly-by-wire dev edition. Uh, the current stable one was 0.74. So it's the current one as of March 24th. When setting up your Thrustmaster TCQA, you need to make sure that you go to Settings, Devices, then you want to make sure under your joysticks that you have the proper pieces enabled. Now, my rudders are not plugged into the TCQ. Uh, they plug directly into a USB port. So because of that, I have disabled it. However, I do have engine one and two and I do have the left side and right side add-ons, so I have made sure to enable those. Now that we know that those are enabled, let's go ahead and get into our control page. So on our control page, the three sections are going to show up independent of one another. And if you had four throttles, well, there'd be another one of those. To make this easy for everyone, if you just want the snippet and follow along or look at it yourself, click on any item, any button, any switch, whatever it may be. Go over to Online Snippets. You're going to want to go to the TCQ engine. You're going to go to Complete Device. And you're going to look for this one here. You're going to go ahead, click OK. And of course, you're going to hit yes to replace all events so it maps it exactly how I've done it so that when we jump into the fly pad, everything works the same. Previously, to deal with detents and the original engines, we had to set up the buttons and figure out ranges and detents and do all that. With the fly pad changes, it makes life super easy. So all we need to do is set the button on the right hand side which we did by going to add event button pressed and it brings up the assignment dialog for the button that's on the x-axis so that's the red button on the left side and of course for that we're using the auto throttle arm event for the axis we went to add event and we needed to do a custom axis which brings up our custom axis dialog and what we assigned to it was no range definition and we did want to rescale the value because the Thrustmaster puts out 0 through 65,000 and we're going to rescale that from minus 16,383 to 16,384. We're then going to pick our target of throttle 1 axis set underscore EX1. Those are found on the Microsoft Flight Sim items. We want to set axis value is on because if it's not on, you can't do anything else. We do want it to use the rescaled value and we are doing an inverted axis so that at the bottom it is zero. We click OK and we hit save. Now the easiest thing to do is just click on this, copy all events, click on the next one, paste them, and then you just come in and you would have changed it from throttle one axis, come down to throttle two, and you would have been done. Now it's always good to come into your axis configuration and let's make sure that we also calibrate it all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, and the bottom is past the gate. So I'm holding up the flap that prevents you from going there. All right, so save calibration, save, just in case I think I missed the save. 
So let's start calibration. Save calibration, hit save. For our engine start switches, for this, we headed over to the fly-by-wire documentation, which tells you exactly what events you use for what pieces. Highly recommend you review it. Uh, but when it's switched on, we want to open fuel valve open with a parameter of one. Uh, when we switch it off, we want a fuel valve close parameter one. The second switch, copy, paste, all events, and now you're changing it to parameter two. For the starter switch, crank mode, ignition set one and two need to go to zero, uh, so that since it's a default, it doesn't show you the parameter of zero. When it's in the normal mode, set those to switch setting of one. And when in the start, we send the event two. Now the fire switches have no actions, so I figured let's map those to our APU. Give us something to do, kind of engines, works great. So this is the APU master switch. So there is a button pressed. And when button released, uh, again, it's using the intelligence of conditions. And then over here, we've got conditions being set as well. And this will trigger the start switch. So of course, you must have the master switch enabled before you can press the start switch. While we have time, let's quickly jump over and see that example. So we're going to press the switch to give us our master starter switch. And then we are going to fire the start of the APU. So there we go. We're going to let that get fired up. And while that's doing that, let's move on to the TCQ add-on on, on the left side. Now, we had to play with some things to get the spoilers working just the way we liked. Now, what's funny is we didn't map anything to the axis. Instead, we've got it that when this button is pressed, it's going to set the spoilers to zero. It's going to pause for 100 milliseconds, and then it's going to arm the spoilers. So I've got it so all the way to the top, it's going to arm the spoilers. And then for each detent, it's going to set the spoilers to the value that corresponded to what we needed to match the settings in the sim. Gear up, when the event is up, we send gear up. When it's down, we send gear down. Now obviously the audio brake switch is a little weird for the auto brakes. So it's more Boeing-like, but we mapped it anyway. So in the disarm mode, so all the way down in the disarm position, we have it set to set the A32NX auto brakes LVAR mode to zero. And when it's in the low, so nothing is assigned for BTV. When it's in the low, we have it set to one. When it's a two, it's set to two. For auto brake three, Again, we could have skipped it, uh, but we've left it as a two as well. Uh, that way, coming out of high, we'll set it to two. And then finally, for auto brake high, we're setting it to mode three, which is the highest setting of the 320s auto brake. So what we're talking about here is this little setting. So each of the detents will lock in to each of the spoiler positions. And then when we go all the way to the up position, We've got it set so that it will go into arm. And if we just pull it back a little bit to come off of the stop, it'll go ahead and it will go to the zero position and disarm the spoilers. Our gear switch, and of course, it will not trigger when we're on the ground. Uh, you can't actually move this uh, even in the sim uh, when we're on the ground. We've got our different auto brake setting, which again, it's not actually going to let us press because we're not in a mode to accept it just yet. So you see it flick on and go out. Finally, we're going to pick up with the right side mappings. So for the rudder trim reset, we assigned that button uh, that when pressed for a short time, it's going to set the rudder trim to zero. 
the rudder trim switch. There is a left and a right, but there is also a held as well. Currently, it does not appear like the held events are triggering, uh, but that has been flagged. For parking brakes, we have the same old condition where to turn the parking brake on and off. We need to send the parking brake event, but to not get out of sync, you want to make sure that you check where the lever is. So switched on, I need to first check that it actually was in the off position before firing the event so that I can keep it in sync. Same thing with the switched off. Need to check that it was actually in the on position before sending the event. Flaps, that was the easiest one of them all. Just came in, went to standard axi. We picked the flap. Uses the auto detent. And we basically said, this is full up. That is full down. And we clicked OK. So as you can see, we can move our rudder trim. We can reset our rudder trim. We have our parking brake, which is mapped. And what we were talking about with those conditions was so that when we switch it, it doesn't toggle and get out of sync. So those two pieces fully set up. And then our flaps perfectly matching each one of the four detents. Making the throttle work, though, is going to be in the fly pad. So let's go ahead and swing over to the fly pad and show you what we have to do. So we want to click on the fly pad and fire it up. We're going to jump to settings. We're going to go to sim options and we're going to go and calibrate our throttles. And because this is a full axi throttle, meaning there is a reverser position, it makes it really easy to configure this. So reverser is on the axis. That means there is a positive and negative side. Uh, and we have two, so they're independent. So we have both those checked. So we come to our reverse full tab. Might as well start off at the bottom. And I went ahead and I moved both of these to the bottom. From there, I just hit set from throttle. And you can see it's active with the green. This one gets a little bit lower, and so it sets its dead band for us. And so you could just keep on coming to make sure that it clicks in. And if you wanted to override the value, you could. So if I still wanted to have left that at a 97, so then we want to bring them up to the reverse idle. And I like it just below where those are going to click in. And it's almost where you'll see the markers align. So the yellow line is right where that foot is in the middle of it. So we come to the reverse idle page. And we can set from throttle where those are to be. So those are now set. Then I come over the gate and I just pull down a little bit. I go to my idle. I set that for my idle. This side looks perfect, uh, but we'll press the button anyway. I always found this to be a little weird. We're going to do it for the sake of the video, but I found that this is such a small amount that goes from idle to climb. Really, the climb should be way up here, and then the other modes, but they didn't. They made such a small manual range. But for the sake of this video and configuration matching where the detents are, we're just going to move these to their detents, make sure that we feel them in the detent. We're going to go to climb. We're going to set it. We're going to come over here. We're going to set it. Nice. Now for flex, we go up to the next detent. As you can see, it's such a long range to flex when there's really nothing between climb and flex. It's just a detent. And then toga, again, it's all the way to the top, so seems like a long way to go uh, for us to 
have that setting. So we're going to go ahead, hit save and apply, and we are done. Let's jump back over to the throttles. So now that we're at the throttles, you can see we've got our detents all lining up. But like we're talking about, this is such a large range. Um, and when you look in the UI of the sim, you could see that it's such a small gap, yet physically we move so far between what Thrustmaster gave us. But we'll live with it. Well, so we know the throttles are good to go. Did we get the engines right? Well, let's find out. And there it goes. And for the sake of time, we're just going to go ahead and start engine number one as well. Well, there you have it. Let's get those engines spooling. And while they're spooling, and we're going to jump in and start punching in our CDU from Cockpit Master, we're going to say goodbye and catch you on the next one. If you could, please go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come along on the next one. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.